What's going on Facebook? It's Money Boy Trey. This is the Toxic Masculinity Show. I'm here with Baltimore, Maryland's own G. Yancey. What's good, my guy? Right, man. What's up with you, man? How you feeling, sir? Man, so I understand that you out here in these rap streets, and I'm a street nigga. It's a lot of niggas out here with their product, man. Why should I buy your product? Let me hear something. All right, okay. I said, bitches be doing too much. How can she lose? She be strong too much. And I get across the water, not a border. I'm going to go to war with Trump. Hit his ass with his toys. Knock him out of the forum. Make the nigga doors go up. I double back out with nothing. Turn it into something. I be really doing too much. Tell the truth. I don't hang with bitches. Chief Keith, I just bang these bitches. Boy, I ain't never changed. Money go to fame. I just know some things come with it. I ain't never been a lame. Said being a lame. We're going to be a train collision. Made a plan, but I failed. Came home from jail. Then I made the same decision. And I love the way making money make me feel. I never stand what you stand still. I ain't trying to people selling most pills. I just want my fist scared of head guilt. Said he, nigga said he want to Bad bitch, some bad habits. Add up to a bill. Can you suck a dick? Can you cook a meal? I don't even hang with a can. Ah, all right. That's just a little. Hey, 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 hey. For a freestyle, sir, I salute you. Uh -huh. That was 100. I fuck with that. And I also fuck with you because you dark skin and we need more dark skin representation out here in these rap streets. So you, you, oh. you got a supporter in me off top. So let these people know where they can find you at. Give any shout outs. Drop your, your YouTube, social media, IG, all this shit. Man, my, my, uh, my IG is GNC410. That's G Y A N C Y 410. My YouTube, everything GNC, G, G Y A N C Y. My YouTube, Spotify, I got over 100,000 streams. I got my new single out called I Don't Wanna Say It. You know what I mean? Make sure y'all tap in. I got a song with Roddy, Roddy Rich. NBA young boy, and I'm ready to drop the song with 21 Savage, man. Make sure y'all lock in with a nigga, man. Oh, bet. So you've already done industry features. Yeah, hell yeah. So what what was your who who was the 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 best feature or the, the feature that you were most excited to work with thus far? Roddy Rich. Roddy Rich. Mm -hmm. That's the uh the box, the guy that does the, the, the box rapper, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, he got bars. I fuck with this song. Okay, okay. So how how long have you been rapping? Oh, I've been rapping for like 10 years, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. 10 years. I've been in jail a couple times, you know. I took two years out of my life back and forth and shit like that. You know, I'm down and up. So, you know, uh, between the breakthroughs, I say about a strong eight. But like out of two, three years out of them, 10. You know what I mean? Kind of been like some bullshit. So I'm going to go ahead and I've been rapping for 10, but, you know, consistent for like, I say about like three years now. So who was your inspiration that got you started rapping? Meek Mills. You know what I mean? Shout Meek Mills. Meek Mills, because he was from Philly. You know, Baltimore, Philly, like this, we like cousins. You know, and, you know, I just saw Meek and I'm just like, damn, this nigga ain't got a whole bunch of money. You know, he ain't flashing a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of jewelry. And just his talent, he was just on every camera. You know, um, he was on every fucking YouTube channel. He was just on every, any, any month, any junk he can get on. Yeah, I'm not open up for Meek Mills. And they Man, that's what's up. A lot of people don't understand the work that goes into creating a song. They think it's just... They think the end product, what they see in the video, is it. What What is a typical studio session and songwriting process like for you? All right, so first of all, you want to get a beat, right? Then you don't want to just pick any beat. You want to make sure it's high quality, and you want to make sure that jump got uh, the proper the proper uh, timing, you know, as far as, like, the hook in the verse, the hook in the verse, first off. Then you want to get in contact with the beat, per beat person first, you want to get in contact with the producer. So then, you know, you come up with your little hook or whatever, whatnot. You book a session, you know, make sure you figure out how much it's going to cost to do the song, how much it's going to cost for you to get a mix, how much it's going to cost for you to get it promoted, you know. So, I, I mean, it, it really don't take too much for me because I, I, I'm doing it for a while. But, you know, um, I say, I just say, man, basically get your basics right first before you trying to indulge into doing a song because. After you shoot that video, five hundred or thousand dollars for the video. You go to the studio, spend two hundred to get the mix and master. 
then you throw that joint on, on YouTube and that bitch don't get no views. You gotta know that you put your money behind your mark. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So how is it to um is, is it hard coming up in the underground scene in Baltimore? Hell yeah, you gotta worry about your motherfucking niggas blowing your motherfucking head off. First off, you gotta worry about the police, you know, and you just it, it's just a real it's just a real is a is a is a good is a good place. I'm talking about you can walk down the street and ask somebody for twenty dollars, they fuck around and give it to you, but it's a bad place too as well. You know, to the point where it's like ain't really a lot of not, op, not it's not a lot of opportunities here. So, you know, you might you might run into somebody that knows somebody, but he he gonna charge you to get in contact with the nigga. They like everybody down here gatekeep. You know, they gatekeep down here. They ain't gonna let you know where they got that food from. They not gonna let you know where they got their clothes from. They're not gonna let you know you know who the who the man is. They're gonna keep everything for themselves and not keep everybody down. Cause ain't nobody helping each other here. Well, y'all aren't alone in, in that area. I feel like uh there's a lot of underground rappers across the United States that will say the same thing. Memphis has been saying it for years, and we're finally starting to get several rappers and artists to come up at the same time as opposed to it be one for two, three years, then so just you keeping at it, and like you said, you've been doing features and stuff, so you you uh you're grinding, so you you're on the right path, and these people are listening with you, that they're around you, that they they're feeling the vibe, obviously, because they're willing to work with you. Because right. I don't care how much money a person is spending, if I don't like you or your product, I can't vibe with it. Right, for sure. So, how has the pandemic affected you as an artist? Um, it, it affected me because it wasn't a lot of opening lanes in Baltimore anyway. And since we're a small city, um, a lot of people don't know that Baltimore exists. It's like, um, that's out, that's really in the music scene. So as far as like the pandemic, um, with the music is like no shows. It's like, it's already been a small city. It just made it even, even more smaller. So it's like, it, it hindered a lot, you know, but it helped a lot too. But only like on on like social media and stuff like that. As far as like out in the real world in Baltimore with the music, no, it, it, it everything crashed. Everything crashed. Everybody stopped doing everything and just went go back to what they was uh, good at doing. Yeah, I definitely think it hindered and helped. It, it definitely made people uh, turn into different type hustles. Because if we look at what Versus did, them motherfuckers threw virtual concerts and had the motherfuckers packed every time. So, so I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So um are you worried about I get would you consider yourself like a, a drill type rapper or are you familiar with drill type music? Yeah, yeah, I know drill, I know drill. No, not at all, not at all. Um I'm more like I, I mean I I can do all. Like I live in Baltimore, so you know the street shit in me. I rap about it, you know, but I, I, I betrayal, I, I do portrayal, betrayal rap. Like all my raps about like me helping, you know, niggas get on their feet, niggas turn their back on me, me fucking with bitches, they not really there for a nigga. How, how they, how, how I need them to be there for me, but how they want to be there for you. Um, I might talk about like, uh, uh, you know, how, 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 you know, niggas be switching up for these bitches and, you know, I, in jail talk, I do the jail shit. So, you know, I really rap about like betrayal rap for real. Gotcha. You you are rapping about stories that you've seen and done, not necessarily drill music. Okay, I could because my question was going to be like in the time of drill music, that's almost the most dangerous job to have. For now sure. we're gonna ask you, are you sure you want that job? Yeah, because a nigga most definitely challenge you. I did do the drill song. I did do a drill song. It was about when I was in jail though, you know. You know. Well, yeah, that's still, that's not like you out here beefing with uh, anybody. Because it was funny, a uh, guy named Tommy Sotomayor said last night, he was pointing out how FBG Duck died the way that he was talking about somebody else died. King Von died the same way that he was rapping about killing somebody. And he pointed out Honeycomb Brazy. Uh, grandparents were burned the same way that he said that he would do somebody's grandparents. He was like, maybe niggas need to start rapping about winning the lottery and I just found I found it funny. How about that energy will come. That energy will come. You know, you manifest what you think about and how you move, you know. 
and, and you know, I you like it been times where I'm thinking about money so hard to the point where I find that shit on the ground. That's what's up. You it is just all I've been thinking about it so hard I dream about it. You know, um so I guess sometimes which what we think about do we manifest it in small ways where see in Baltimore it's like kinda like, you know, we talk about that drill and you know, dangerous and shit like that. You can go about your life and go good, good, you won't even see the drama. But when it happened, bro, it it happens. It, it most definitely happens. Like and it happens. You be like, How the fuck did I get here? Where am I at? You know, so at the end of the day, you just got to always be prepared, you know. So where do you want to see G. Yancey? What, 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 is a, what would be a successful career for G. Yancey? A successful career for me would be like, you know, I say about like three number one songs. Because um, that's all you need. Just to, you know, you can eat off them for the rest of your life. You know, three number one songs, a, 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 a movie that's premiered in the theaters, um, and you know, a, a, a business, you're not gonna lead in my son. That'll be successful for me. That'll be successful. That's what's up. And I love the fact that you said a business that you could leave for your son. That's mm -hmm. what's up. We need more young men thinking like that, leaving yeah. shit to their sons because we don't we don't value generational wealth as much as we should. Nope. So in this political climate, if you were able to speak to the mayor of Baltimore, Maryland, what would you tell him is needed in your community? Um, I, I think I most definitely just say that we need better police. You know, we need better police and we need kind of like, uh, when I mean better police, I'm not talking about more stricter police, more people just jump. Better police meaning like, you can be riding down the street. If they're not, just notice you. If they even ever see you went to court before and they tell you, they'll, they'll pull you over um, and not even pulling up behind you, they'll box you in and make you jump out of your car like and, and search your car right then and there. Like, so it's like, when I mean like a better, like far as like, if I could talk to the man, I tell them, look, yo, we need better police and like better people. That's, that's saving people because they're not saving nobody. These people not saving nobody, they're not, you know, uh, uh, they're not helping at all, you know. Um, that they need more football, they need more football teams, more rec centers, you know, and they need to knock down some of the fucking jails and build more, like more programs for people to, to be better people, you know. Cause we ain't got nothing to get into here. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. Nothing. Anything. Stop at Baltimore School of Arts. That's it. Have you ever thought about making a song called Dear Mayor and putting all that into a song? Um, that would be a hit in Baltimore on its own just because the black people would feel that song and it's not cussing, it's not disrespecting right. them, it's, it's, it's straight from the heart telling them what your people need and how y'all are living. Um, Yeah, but you know, we got the whole the Baltimore City police, they sell drugs down this bitch. They, you know, they rob niggas down this bitch. So it's like, it's corrupted. It's corrupted. Our own mayor, we had a mayor before, she was stealing money, charity money. She was, you know, they, they you, police were selling cocaine more than drug dealers. Like, it's corrupted down here, bro. Like, talking to them is like talking to your, your, your cousin just got to jail for the fifth time that won't listen to nobody but his grandmother. Wow. Yeah. The world did not know that Baltimore, Maryland was like this. Hell yeah, yes. Hell. All we know is the, the stories of where they just say it's high crime and poverty. We don't know the details Hell. of the police like you're saying. But it's corrupted, bro. Like, corrupted. The, the doctors corrupted. They be wearing cameras, looking at the women. You know, there was a lawsuit. It was a, um, Dr. Levy. It was a um, $191 million lawsuit against John Hopkins because the doctor was um, having uh, hitting cameras on him watching the lady selling the videos, you know, and the nigga killed herself, you know, and then they settled out for 191 million, you know? So, yeah, Baltimore most definitely a corrupted place, you know? It's a beautiful place, it's in like downtown, you know, um, you know, food and stuff like that, but anything other than that, um, no, because it be people just visit, that visit Baltimore and end up dying, you know? And, and it's just not, there's no street shit or nothing like that, they might be downtown, they don't know how to, the be so they get down there and they might be from New York. You know, in New York, you gonna bump a person and you know, keep it moving. Like it ain't nothing happening. But you get right. that, they fuck around, push you in the harbor water. You know, 
So it, it it's it's most definitely uh it's most definitely bad. It's a beautiful place when you've been here for a while and you just know the ins and outs. But you know, just coming here, you know, it's it ain't nothing to get into. Everybody corrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Toxic Masculinity Show. I am here with Baltimore, Maryland rapper G Yancy. G Yancy, let these people know where they can find you at on social media. And y'all can find me on um, IG at GNC410. That's G Y A N C Y. You can find me on um, on YouTube. It's GNC410. That's my um, my YouTube channel. I'm on Spotify. Everything GNC. I'm on Spotify. Title Shazam, Pandora, anything you can name. Any streaming uh, platform you can name. I'm on there. You know, I do got a song with Roddy Rich coming in 21 Savage. So y'all stay tuned to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what song have you done that meant the most to you? You were going through something in life and that song was like the perfect storm to describe everything you were going through. Um, The song called I Don't Want to Say It. I Don't Want to Say It? Uh, I Don't Want to Say It. You know, um, it was basically about like uh something, something I was going through with like people, you know, and uh, like I might go do something with a girl that might be faking pregnant just to get money, so I threw her in there. You know, I might go do something with one of my homeboys that kind of like, but he hanging with a nigga that robbed him. You know, um, I might say something about, uh, you don't like me, I don't like you, you ain't gonna like my gun. You feel me? You heard what I said, never what I do, so you can't say what I done. As long as you real, I can fuck with you, I just don't like no bum. You get her own hair and her nails dead, she always make me come. Like, you know, so I might just you know, just talk about a female that's, that's, that's hating on our homegirls. So I had a lot of stuff in there, but I was just stressed out. I wasn't stressed out, but I was just was like, I got to get the shit out of my chest. And I just put it in a song and that joint is rocking right now. That's one of my biggest songs. But I don't want to say it. That's what's up. I don't want to say it. Is that song on YouTube? It's on YouTube, titles, Pandora, everything. You know what I mean? I Heart Radio, everything. So man, when this pandemic lets up, what what are the plans for GS? Are you are you going on tour? Are you trying to set up a tour? What's next? Um, I'm a, uh right now I'm going to uh, I'm a, I'm thinking about going to Texas, you know. So you know, uh, so I really, I'm thinking about going to Texas. Where I'm dealing with Mr. Lee, that's Nipsey Hussle, uh, ex manager. You know, um, I'm dealing with Mr. Lee, so you know he he got um some stuff going on for me. Boys out in Cali, um, they got stuff going on for me. I supposed to go to Cali, and um, I stay about like three weeks. I'm supposed to go to ATL in like two, so you know I got some stuff coming. You know I'm trying to get in contact with Harry O, the one, the guy that funded the um, the funded Death Row. That's what's up. Stay away from the strip clubs. Stay away from the strip clubs in Atlanta. Why you say that? Because the devil is in there. So? And the devil with double D's and fat asses don't stay out of that place. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, so you can't come up in there. You can only lose. You can only lose in that motherfucker. You can't come up not unless you pimp it. So, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like no, that ain't that ain't what it is. I'm gonna go there. You know, you know, you just, you just, you, I guess you pay for what you want. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, you know, no, that ain't nothing. You know, to keep a hold. You know, you're having to keep. You know, I ain't, we ain't never lived like that. So, you know, in Baltimore, we we saw it, but we ain't never lived like that. So, that shit probably that shit ain't gonna phase us that much. Are you are you are you one of the people that think uh, thought culture has gone too far, or because I mean, I used to rap, and one thing I would say is I ain't had no problem calling women bitches and hoes, throwing money, and doing all that shit. Women loved it. Men loved it. Now that I kind of say it's went too far, I kind of get pushed in a box and told I hate women and shit like that. But as a man, you're an artist. But outside of being an artist, when you hire women or model for your videos, do you think that culture has taken over? Okay, so when I do get, like, you know, girls get in my video, they are classy women. You know what I mean? They're they not, you know... Um, like on the promiscuous tip when there are classy women that you don't mind being seen with because that's all if I if you seen with a rat 
they're going to probably consider you it's a potential one. If you've seen with a fag, they're going to consider you as a potential fag. So it's kind of like, you know, the certain women that you'll be around say a lot about you. So at the end of the day, right, you know, um, because the, the bitches that you don't supposed to be seen with, you're not seen with, you know what I mean? They come in or not, you know? So um, the thought culture, I cast, it did because now bitches and females are embracing it more. They're embracing it. You know, they think that's a lifestyle, you know, um, and, and, it, and, it's, and it's like, I guess. And that's my problem with it. Even the ones with kids think it's a lifestyle. It's supposed to be a single woman's lifestyle, not a mom with three kids. Yeah, yeah, like that. That's 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 most definitely not. You know, um, people look at the females look at that like this goals and stuff like that. They be so hurt. They be having so many issues with they, with you know with they, with they, uh with them themselves. You know, they kind of live like you know. Oh, I'm gonna do this, and they feel like they hurting somebody when they doing that, but and um, really hurting themselves, you know, because them women they they they, they looking for them, they looking to get what they want to get. They not doing anything for anybody, you know. They not making nobody life easier. Not at all. You got any any uh shout outs? Any anybody that helped you along the way? You want to name drop? You want to shout out? Give thanks to? I want to shout out my um. My video man, his name uh, Zion, you know, Live Like Kings Production. I want to shout out him, Jason, Ian, you know, um, T Cannon Boy Tez, you know, um, all my production like people. Cause, because it been days I ain't had no money. They say, yo, we ready to shoot you a video. That video might be $1,500, you know, but they might shoot it for free from just to, you know, just to, to see me get up there. You know, and they might say, yo, just holler at me on the back end, you know, so I want to shout them out. Um, of course, I want to shout out my family and stuff like that, you know. Um, but as far as, like, with the music, since we're talking about music, um, I really don't have that many supporters except for strangers. I want to shout out all the strangers, all the people I don't know because y'all support me the most, all the people that I, I never met, y'all support me the most, the, all the people that, you know, um, I never know exist, y'all support me the most. I appreciate y'all. Um, even the That's people how it typically goes. Don't feel discouraged. That's how it typically goes. Yeah, but majority, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, you know what I mean? I'm going to get them to shout out because they the ones that's reposting my music, you know, commenting, you know, you know, um, and they not that, but you got everybody around just waiting for you to blow up, you know, but everybody else, they, they doing all the hard work, really getting your name out there. Like, I really want to appreciate them, you know, strangers for real. Most definitely. I want to piggyback on that as well. Thank you, all Toxic Masculinity supporters who like, share, comment, dislike my shit, hate on my shit. Thank all of you. I need y'all. Thank y'all for y'all support. We've been growing. And as always, if y'all don't go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe, you ain't black. So, GNC, uh, give them your social media one more time before we get out of here. And if you got anything you want to ask me, go ahead and fire off. Um, I mean, how is it in the Memphis? Like, far as like a um a unknown uh, artist coming to Memphis to try and get on, you know, it's how did you get into what you into? Pretty much rebranding. Music was moving too slow for me, and I just decided to rebrand and start talking. Don't get me wrong, I still do music. Like when I get out and I go out of town, I still got my music that I hop out the trunk and sell. My shit's still on Bandcamp, but I don't actively promote and I haven't dropped in damn near two years. But for an outside, an outsider can make a lot more noise in Memphis than a person that's from here because you're new. Right, You'd right. be the new face they hadn't heard, they hadn't seen for all these years. They hadn't been hearing them up and say, hey, listen to this, listen to this. So outsiders have it a little better, but it's still no different than any place else. If you're sm if you're unknown, you got to you got to work and you damn near got to leave the city to get on. OK, OK, OK. I go through Shicey who's out from out there. Yeah, he's from out there, but he, he had to get. Somebody from outside the city had to get him. He had to link up with Gucci them. Yeah, okay. It, it wasn't about, it wasn't anybody from Memphis that was on it grabbing him. But we're starting to get better at it. So I gotta commend us for starting to break the chains. But it's still a slow process. Y'all got a lot of artists coming out there. They don't know no artists from Baltimore, do you? 
Well, we, we're going to try to help get G. Yancey out there. We, I'm definitely going to do my part down here. I, I got a strike on YouTube right now, so this won't be up for uh, another couple of days on YouTube, but I would definitely upload it there and see if I can get you some subscribers to go over to your page. I dropped your channel and shit in the links on this one to get people to go subscribe. And that, that's pretty much what, like, in the digital age, man, I would reach out to these, like, do you remember during the pandemic when all these DJs were going live and they were doing little mix parties from their house? Yeah, that reach was... out to reach out to more of those guys from different states when they be on and send them your shit. Right, for sure. <laughs> I did a couple of them, you know, but I kind of felt like it was like, uh, you know, they was charging, you know, I, I, I ain't nothing wrong with hustling, charging people to play, but, um, but if you only got 50 people on there, you know, and you, yeah. you charging, you so, you know that. Well, you, yeah, you know that. That's where we have to use discernment. Yeah, majority of them just be artists, so that's why I stopped on open mics because I'm doing a show with a hundred artists, you know, and there's nobody there really to, you know, everybody like, all right, now my turn to get out the stage, or my song better than his, get out. I can perform better than him, get out the stage. So it was like, mm, I need to go somewhere with the people that's actually looking for artists and not artists trying to look for other artists because that's all it is open mic. You know, so I stopped doing that. So I stopped doing that. You know, I stopped going to events where there's nothing but artists. I stopped I stopped going there. You know, if it ain't no executives, if it ain't no ARs, there ain't no P PRs, if it ain't no uh people that do videography for design. Like it, it need to be more than just artists there. You know, when people be doing these events together or be online and, you know, oh yo, I'm gonna charge you for here now you got ten people that's just like man just you got 10 haters online, and they are artists trying to get on there as well. So, you know, once a nigga play a song, you know, and nigga be like, he be looking for something in return, and ain't nothing in return, he'll get off. And now everybody else on there, and when his song go off, he get off. So it's like, usually I look for another platform to really, you know, be seen instead of being heard. Pretty much. That's why I despise open mics. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, did you have anything else to add? Um, no, nah, man. I just thank you, bro. I thank you, bro. I appreciate you. You know, most definitely appreciate you. I appreciate you, man. You got to sound like you have a solid business plan. You've been working, networking with people. Sounds like you have a bright future ahead of you. And like I said, I'm gonna do my part by because I do have a lot. I got some DJs checking in now on the page. I do have a lot of uh DJs from Maryland or up in the DMV area that are friends on my page. So hopefully they'll see this as well and get to working with you. Shout your, your social media and stuff out one more time. Let these people know where they can find you. Okay, well, you can find me on IG at GNC410, that's G-Y-A-N-C-Y 410. Um, YouTube, GNC, everything is GNC. G -Y, uh, book GNC, um, just take the book off. Everything is GNC on every platform you can name. You know, um, even if you if you can't find it with GNC, type in uh, 410 behind it, and I'll pop up. So, you know, I ain't really got too much going on about the GNC thing. It's Ladies and gentlemen, y'all make sure y'all go support this young man, GNC, everywhere. As he said, he has a song with Roddy Rich, and as well as One Savage coming up. And who else did you say you had features with? Yeah, NBA Young Boy. NBA Young Boy. Some of the y'all like these rappers. If he's worked with them, he gotta be good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all for tuning in to the Toxic Masculinity Show. I'm Money Boy Trey. We are out. Peace. All right, bro. Appreciate you, boss. Money boy, money boy, money boy, money boy, money boy, Trey. Money boy, money boy, money boy, money boy. Trey. 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 Trey